Hi there. Today's video is on statistics in healthcare research. Be warned. I'm going to talk about two concepts, the odds ratio and the relative risk ratio. And part of my motivation for this is realizing just how many people confuse one for the other. For example, in psychopharmacology, there was a recent meta-analysis looking at how effective antidepressant medications are compared to placebos. And the results were expressed as odds ratios. But the media, and to an extent the practitioner community as well, they didn't understand how to interpret these odds ratios. And they made completely wrong inferences about what the data said. So you can use odds ratios and relative risk ratios in all kinds of ways, but I'm going to use the example of a new medication compared to an inert pill, a placebo. You could just as easily use a new form of psychotherapy compared to waitlist or to treatment as usual or to some kind of placebo treatment. So let's say you run a double blind study on a new pill to cure social anxiety or depression or acne or anything you like. Let's assume social anxiety. Double blind means that people come into the study and start taking a medication, but neither they nor the physician knows whether they're getting the real thing or the sugar pill. They look exactly the same. Only later do we break the code and figure out who got what. And when we do that, it turns out 40% of the people in the drug condition in our imaginary study got better, 4 out of 10. Only 20% of the people in the placebo condition got better, 2 out of 10. The relative risk ratio is simpler, so let's calculate that first. The term relative risk ratio comes from the early use of this statistic to look at bad events, like lethal side effects. So it's talking about the risk of that bad thing happening. When we're looking at a treatment, we're focusing on the likelihood of a good thing happening, the person getting better, but we still call that the risk. So the risk of someone getting better in the drug condition is 40 out of 100, 40%. The risk of someone getting better in the placebo condition is 20 out of 100, 20%. So the relative risk is the risk of one compared to the other, and we express this as a ratio, 40 over 20. And if we divide that out, we get 2.0. And you can see why. People are twice as likely to get better if they get the medication than if they get the sugar pill. That's what makes relative risk ratios pretty easy to interpret. If you get a relative risk ratio of five, you know the outcome you're looking at happened five times as often in one situation compared to the other. Easy peasy. If the medication does better than the placebo, the relative risk ratio is going to be bigger than one. If it does worse, it will be smaller than one. So it's easy to tell who won the race and by how much. Okay, but the relative risk ratio isn't what you see in a lot of the literature. Instead, it's the odds ratio, different thing. So let's calculate that. The first question is, what the hell are odds? Most people think they know, 20% or 0% or something. But if you've ever seen a betting form, you know that odds are usually expressed as like seven to two, or nine to one or something. The odds of someone getting better on the real medication are expressed as a ratio of the number who got better compared to the number that didn't. We know that 40% got better, so how many didn't? 60%. That has to add to 100 because you either got better or you didn't, and they have to, again, add up to 100. So what are the odds? 40 to 60. And if we put that in a ratio, it's 40 over 60. So if you divide that out, you get 0 0.6667. Actually, 0.66666 forever, but we'll abbreviate it. What about the placebo condition? 20% got better. So logically, 
80% didn't. So those odds are 20 over 80. And if you divide that out, you get 0 0.250. So what's an odds ratio? It's a ratio of two sets of odds. The odds of the medication working over the odds of the placebo working. So in other words, it's 0 0.667 over 0 0.250. And if you divide that out, you get approximately 2.67. And that is your odds ratio. We have, in this study, imaginary, an odds ratio of 2.67. Now, you can probably tell that the odds ratio is kind of like the relative risk ratio in one respect. If the medication condition does better than placebo at all, the result is going to be greater than 1 because the first number will be bigger than the second one. And if the medication condition doesn't do as well as placebo, the result will be below one. And that makes odds ratios easy to grasp at least a bit. Below one, not as good. Above one, better. So what's the issue? Well, the problem is many readers will look at the odds ratio and assume that the medication is 2.67 times as effective as the placebo. But you already know that isn't true. It's 40% compared to 20%, twice as effective, 2.00. It's not 2.67 times as effective. Take a look at the results of this meta-analysis by Cipriani and his team. They looked at 21 different antidepressant medications compared to placebo, and they got an odds ratio greater than one for every single one of them. No big surprise, really. We're kind of hoping they didn't do worse than a nothing pill. But look at those numbers. The odds ratios range from 1.37, that's the worst, to 2.13, that's the best. Let's take a look at the press. The BBC, which you think would be pretty good, says the study found that antidepressants ranged from being a third more effective than placebo to more than twice as effective. Lots of the coverage of this study says exactly the same thing, but hang on. The article doesn't say that. Where is the reporter getting this idea? Look again at the odds ratios. 1.37. If that was a relative risk ratio, it would mean that the drug was about a third more effective than placebo. And the best one was 2.13. If it was a relative risk ratio, the drug would be more than twice as effective as placebo. That has to be where they're getting this idea. But it's completely wrong. If you mistake an odds ratio for a relative risk ratio, you will always, 100% of the time, be overestimating the size of the effect. But when journal readers see odds ratio data, that's a lot exactly what a lot of them do. And then they make treatment decisions based on a misunderstanding of the data. Why do we bother reporting the results of these studies? Well, it's to help people, usually professionals, know how effective a treatment is. But if they misinterpret the statistic, that benefit is lost. Even at scientific or medical conferences, when people discuss the odds ratio, they often get the implications wrong, and that's a bit alarming. So, great, but just how different are the odds ratio and the relative risk ratio? The thing is, that's hard to specify. You have to know the actual numbers of people improving in condition A and condition B. I'll show you. Imagine we have a really hard to treat problem. Only 2% of them get better, these subjects, only 2% get better on our new drug. 1% get better on placebo. Now, instantly, you can see what the relative risk ratio is. 2 to 1, 2.0, right? It's going to be throughout this whole example. It will always be a relative risk ratio of 2.0. So the odds ratio is 2 over 98. Remember, it has to add to 100 if we're talking about percents. Over 1 over 99, which is equal to 0.02, etc. Over 0.01, etc. Equals 
2.02. Now that's really close. 2 to 2.02 .02. with small numbers. The odds ratio and the relative risk ratio practically the same. Now let's imagine that 10% get better on the drug and 5% on the placebo. Again, relative risk ratio, 2. Now, the odds ratio is 10 over 90 to 5 over 95. Now, the odds ratio is 2.11. What if 20% get better on the drug, 10% on placebo? Same relative risk. Here, the odds ratio is 2.25. They're starting to differ a fair bit. Now, we already know what happens if 40% get better on the drug and 20% on the placebo, we get 2.67. That's pretty different than 2.0. What if 80% get better on the drug and 40% on the placebo? Well, now the odds ratio is 6.00. And you can imagine some reporter now claiming that the drug was six times as effective as placebo. It wasn't. What if 90% are better on the drug and 45% on the placebo? Relative risk, 2. The odds ratio now is 11. The same relative risk ratio across the board, 2. But the odds ratio ranges from 2.02 to 11.00, completely depending on how common the event is. And that is why odds ratios can be so tricky to interpret. So in the meta-analysis, we were talking about how far off were those odds ratios. Well, it's a bit hard to know because nowhere in the article did they say the actual numbers of people who got better in either the placebo condition or the medication condition, which means that those odds ratios are virtually uninterpretable. Now, it turns out that in an earlier study, the researcher did identify the number of people who usually get better on placebo. It's around 35 to 40 percent in antidepressants. And as you can see from the work we just did, that's in a range where the odds ratio and the relative risk ratio numbers can be pretty wide apart. Remember that the least effective drug had an odds ratio of 1.37. The relative risk ratio, it's about 1.2, not a third better more like a fifth better. And the best drug had an odds ratio of 2.13. Relative risk ratio, about 1.5. Half again a good, as good, maybe. Not twice as good. So you can see that it's really important to know whether you're talking about a relative risk ratio or an odds ratio. It really makes a difference. Now, while I've got you here, I'll point out another issue with these things. Both odds ratios and relative risk ratios depend on us taking a continuous variable, like how much did you get better, and turning it into a dichotomous one, yes or no. Did you pass our definition of what it means to get better, or did you not pass that definition? And this tempts us into saying things like, Wow, this drug is twice as effective as that one. But this too is a distortion. I'd like you to imagine a four kilometer horse race. There are 10 black horses and 10 white ones. And we give all the black horses really fresh hay and all the white ones stale hay. And then we run the race and we snap a photo just as they get to the finish line. And we look at our photo, eight of the black horses are across the finish line. Two of them haven't crossed it yet. Four of the white horses are over the line. Six of them are not. What's the relative risk ratio associated with our treatment of fresher hay? Well, you know what it is. Eight black to four white. 2.0. The odds ratio is even higher. It's 6. Now, even if you report the relative risk ratio and your readers understand it, they'll think that the black horses were twice as fast as the white ones. They did twice as well. But look at it. That's obviously not true. Look at that field. 
The fastest black horse is only a few lengths ahead of the slowest white one. It's a four kilometer race. None of the horses is two kilometers back there. They're all pretty close. By defining this finish line, we make it look like the hay made a huge difference. In reality, it only made a tiny difference. If we move the finish line a little further ahead, there's no difference. No horse made it. If we move it back, there's no difference. Every horse made it. By defining our finish line, we can make a tiny effect look like a much bigger one. So, was it right to say that antidepressants were twice as effective as placebo? No, that was a complete misunderstanding of the odds ratio. But the best drug did get a relative risk ratio of 1.5. So could we say that the drug was 1.5 times better than placebo? Well, still no. We can say that it was 1.5 times as likely to cross that finish line. But that doesn't mean that people in the medication group improved 1.5 times as much as those who got the sugar pill. And in fact, they didn't. Actual differences on a 52 point scale between medication and placebo were really only about two points overall, below any definition of significant improvement. So my intention here is not to focus on that one study. My goal has been to show you the difference between relative risk ratios and odds ratios and the importance of knowing which one you're looking at. And also, it has been to suggest that both relative risk ratios and odds ratios run the risk of making trivial differences look like big ones. Thanks for watching.